Uh, I think a lot of the reason that that's all they talked about then was that not only are a lot of people gunning for Barbara Streisand, mm -hmm. but it's more interesting to write about a. You might know the name Christopher Christopherson because uh, he is famous for some really popular songs like Me and Bobby McGee, For the Good Times, and Help Me Make It Through the Night. He was one of the best songwriters in the world and one of the smartest people too. But unfortunately, towards the end of his life, some really sad things happened. Let's take a closer look at his story. Christopherson released his first album called Christopherson in 1970. Besides being a great songwriter, Christopherson was also part of a country music supergroup called The Highwaymen from 1985 to 1995. In 2004, he was honored by being inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, and in 2014, he received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. He won three Grammy Awards out of a total of 13 nominations. However, despite all the fame, success, and wealth he achieved, Chris faced a lot of difficult struggles in his life. Stay tuned to learn more about the behind-the-scenes parts of Chris Christopherson's career and what he went through. Early Life Christopher Christopherson was born in Brownsville, Texas, to parents Mary Ann, nay Ashbrook, and Lars Henry Christopherson, who was an officer in the U.S. Army Air Corps, and later became a major general in the U.S. Air Force. When he was a child, his father encouraged him to think about a military career. Because of his father's job, Christopherson moved around a lot while growing up. Eventually, the family settled in San Mateo, California. After finishing high school at San Mateo High School in 1954, he went to Pomona College with hopes of becoming a writer. During his early writing days, he wrote essays that won prizes. Some of his stories, like The Rock and Gone Are the Days, were published in the Atlantic Monthly. These stories revealed Christopherson's interests and concerns. The Rock describes a geographical feature that looks like a woman, while Gone Are the Days discusses a racial incident. At just 17 years old, Christopherson took a summer job with a dredging contractor on Wake Island in the Western Pacific Ocean. He described this job as the hardest job I ever had. While attending Pomona College, Christopherson gained national attention in 1958 when he was featured in the March 31st issue of Sports Illustrated for his achievements in college sports, including rugby, American football, and track and field. He and his classmates helped bring back the Claremont College's rugby club in 1958, which still plays a big role in Southern California rugby today. Christofferson graduated in 1958 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in literature, finishing at the top of his class. He was elected to Phi Beta Kappa during his junior year. In a 2004 interview, he mentioned that philosophy professor Frederick Sontag was an important influence in his life. In 1973, during Alumni Weekend, Christofferson received an honorary doctorate in fine arts from Pomona College. He was awarded this honor alongside fellow performers Johnny Cash and Rita Coolidge. His mentor, Professor Sontag, presented the award to him. In 1958, Christofferson was awarded a Rhodes Scholarship, which allowed him to study at the University of Oxford, specifically at Merton College. While he was there, he earned a blue for boxing, played rugby for his college, and started writing songs. At Oxford, he became friends with another Rhodes Scholar named Michael Freed, who was an art critic and poet. With the help of his manager, Larry Parnas, Christofferson recorded music for top rank records under the name Chris Carson. Parnas aimed to market him as a Yank at Oxford to the British audience, and Christofferson was okay with this approach if it helped his music career, which he hoped would eventually lead him to become a novelist. However, this early stage of his music career was not very successful. In 1960, Christofferson graduated with a B. Phil in English literature. The following year, he married his longtime girlfriend, Frances Fran Mavia Beer. Under pressure from his family, Christofferson joined the U.S. Army and started as a second lieutenant, eventually rising to the rank of captain. He trained to become a helicopter pilot at Fort Rucker, Alabama, and completed ranger school. In the early 1960s, he was stationed in West Germany with the 8th Infantry Division. During this time, he resumed his music career and even formed a band. After finishing his tour in West Germany in 1965, 
He was given the chance to teach English literature at West Point. However, he chose to leave the army instead to focus on songwriting. This decision upset his family, and they disowned him for a while because they saw it as a rejection of their values. Although sources are unclear about whether they eventually reconciled, Christofferson has stated that he is proud of his military service. In 2003, he received the Veteran of the Year Award at the American Veterans Awards Ceremony. Career After Christofferson left the Army in 1965, he moved to Nashville, where he faced a tough time trying to make it in the music industry. While struggling to find success, he had to work various odd jobs to make ends meet, especially since he was dealing with medical bills for his son, who had a problem with his esophagus. Sadly, he and his wife divorced in 1968. To support himself, Christofferson took a job sweeping floors at Columbia Recording Studios in Nashville. There, he met June Carter, and he asked her to pass a tape of his music to Johnny Cash. While she did give him the tape, Cash just added it to a big pile of other tapes he had received. Christofferson also worked as a commercial helicopter pilot for a company in Louisiana called Petroleum Helicopters International, based in Lafayette. He recalled those days as being quite busy, saying, that was about the last three years before I started performing before people started cutting my songs. He would work a week on oil platforms flying helicopters and then return to Nashville to pitch his songs for a week before going back to work. A few weeks after giving his tapes to June Carter, Christofferson made quite an entrance by landing a helicopter in Johnny Cash's front yard. This move definitely got Cash's attention. There was a story that Christofferson showed up with a beer in one hand and some songs in the other, but he later said that wasn't true. He mentioned that it felt like an invasion of privacy. However, when Cash heard the song Sunday Morning Coming Down, he decided to record it. This led to Christofferson winning the Song of the Year Award at the Country Music Association Awards in 1970 for that very song. In 1966, Dave Dudley had a hit with one of Christofferson's songs, Vietnam Blues. The following year, Christofferson signed with Epic Records and released a single called Golden Idol Killing Time, but it didn't do well. Over the next few years, more of his songs started to climb the charts, with artists like Roy Drusky, Billy Walker, Ray Stevens, Jerry Lee Lewis, Farron Young, and Roger Miller all performing his original songs. Christofferson's big break as a performer came when Johnny Cash introduced him at the Newport Folk Festival. In 1971, Janis Joplin, who had previously dated Christofferson, released Me and Bobby McGee from her album Pearl, and the song became a number one hit, staying at the top of the charts for several weeks. Many other artists also found success with Christofferson's songs, including Ray Price, Joe Simon, Bobby Bear, O.C. Smith, and Kenny Rogers, who recorded a version of Me and Bobby McGee in 1969. In 1971, Christofferson released his second album titled The Silver-Tongued Devil and I, which featured the song Lovin' Her Was Easier Than Anything I'll Ever Do Again. This album helped establish his career as a recording artist. Shortly after this success, Christofferson made his acting debut in a film called The Last Movie, directed by Dennis Hopper. He also performed at the Isle of Wight Festival, and part of this performance was included in the compilation The First Great Rock Festivals of the 70s. In the same year, he acted in Cisco Pike and released his third album, Borderlord, which featured all new material, though it didn't sell very well. In 1971, Christofferson had a big night at the Grammy Awards, where many of his songs were nominated. He won the award for Country Song of the Year for Help Me Make It Through the Night. His fourth album, Jesus Was a Capricorn, released in 1972, had a slow start but gained popularity when the third single, Why Me, became a hit. This success helped the album sell over one million copies, earning it a gold disc from the RIAA on November 8, 1973. In 1972, Christofferson appeared with Rita Coolidge on the British TV show The Old Grey Whistle Test, performing Help Me Make It Through the Night. That same year, Al Green also released a version of his song For the Good Times on his album I'm Still in Love With You. For several years after his initial success in music, Christofferson shifted his focus primarily to acting. He made his mark in films like Cisco Pike in 1972, 
where he starred alongside Gene Hackman and Bloom in Love in 1973, directed by Paul Mazursky. He worked on three films with director Sam Peckinpah, Pat Garrett, and Billy the Kid, 1973, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, 1974, and Convoy, 1978. Another notable film during this time was Semi-Tough in 1977, where he acted alongside Burt Reynolds. Christofferson also appeared in Martin Scorsese's Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore in 1974, as well as in Vigilante Force, 1976, The Sailor Who Fell from Grace with the Sea, 1976, and the romantic drama A Star is Born, 1976, with Barbara Streisand, for which he received a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor. Although his acting career was on the rise, Christofferson turned down roles in high-profile projects like William Friedkin's Sorcerer, 1977, and the romantic war film Hanover Street, 1979. Unfortunately, during this period, his solo music career began to decline, highlighted by his non-charting ninth album, Shake Hands with the Devil. His next film, the two-part NBC TV movie Freedom Road in 1979, also failed to attract viewers. In 1980, Christofferson starred as Sheriff James Averill in Michael Cimino's ambitious anti-Western Heaven's Gate. Although the film was a major failure upon release, leading to the collapse of its studio and impacting Christofferson's status in Hollywood, it later received critical acclaim. The following year, he co-starred with Jane Fonda in Rollover, directed by Alan J. Pakula. He also appeared in films like The Last Days of Frank and Jesse James, 1986, with Johnny Cash and Flashpoint, 1984, alongside Treat Williams. Other notable projects included the neo-noir thriller Trouble in Mind, 1985, the seven-episode TV series America, 1987, with Robert Urich and Christine Leite, and the film Millennium, 1989, with Cheryl Ladd. In 1996, Christofferson played Charlie Wade, a corrupt sheriff, in John Sayles' critically acclaimed film Lone Star, which earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Screenplay. The following year, he co-starred with Steven Seagal in Fire Down Below. In 1998, Christofferson joined the cast of Blade, portraying Abraham Whistler, Blade's mentor. He reprised this role in the sequels Blade the Second, 2002, and Blade, Trinity, 2004. In the same year, he starred in Dance With Me with Vanessa Williams and Cheyenne. The next year, he acted alongside Mel Gibson in Payback and played rancher Rudolf Meyer in Molokai, The Story of Father Damien, 1999. He appeared in the 2001 Tim Burton remake of Planet of the Apes and took on the role of Johan, an elderly man, in the Norwegian film Johan, The Child Wanderer. In more recent years, Christofferson co-starred in Dolphin Tale, 2011, and its sequel, Dolphin Tale 2, 2014. He also appeared in Joyful Noise, 2012, alongside his longtime friend Dolly Parton, and was featured in The Motel Life, 2013, and Angels Sing with Willie Nelson and Lyle Lovett. During his musical peak in the early 1970s, Christofferson met singer Rita Coolidge, and they married in 1973. They released an album titled Full Moon, which was another success, featuring several hit singles and earning Grammy nominations. However, his fifth album, Spooky Lady Sideshow, 1974, did not perform well commercially, which set a pattern for much of his subsequent musical career. While artists like Ronnie Millsap and Johnny Duncan continued to successfully record Christofferson's material, his unique rough voice and anti-pop sound limited his own audience. Despite this, more artists found chart success with his songs, including Willie Nelson, whose 1979 album Willie Nelson Sings Christofferson reached number five on the U.S. country music chart and was certified platinum. In 1979, Christofferson traveled to Havana, Cuba to take part in the historic Havana Jam Festival, where he performed alongside notable artists such as Rita Coolidge, Stephen Stills, Billy Joel, and several Cuban musicians. His performance was captured in a documentary titled Havana Jam Re 79. On November 18, 1979, Christofferson and Coolidge made a memorable appearance on The Muppet Show, 
where Christofferson sang Help Me Make It Through the Night with Miss Piggy, Coolidge performed We're All Alone with Some Forest Animals, and the couple sang Song I'd Like to Sing with the Muppet Monsters. Unfortunately, Christofferson and Coolidge divorced in 1980. In 1982, Christofferson collaborated with Willie Nelson, Dolly Parton, and Brenda Lee on The Winning Hand, a double album that included remastered and updated versions of recordings made by the four artists during their time with the Monument label in the mid-1960s. This album performed well, reaching the top 10 on the U.S. country album charts. Around the same time, Christofferson married Lisa Myers and shifted his focus back to film. Appearing in several movies in 1984, including The Lost Honor of Catherine Beck, Flashpoint, and Songwriter. In Songwriter, Christofferson and Nelson acted together, and Christofferson received an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Score. The album Music from Songwriter, featuring duets by Christofferson and Nelson, also enjoyed country success. The partnership between Christofferson and Nelson blossomed further when they teamed up with Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash to form the supergroup The Highwaymen. Their debut album, Highwaymen, was well-received and solidified their status in country music. The title track, written by Jimmy Webb and originally recorded in 1977, became a major hit and was awarded the ACM's Single of the Year in 1985. In the same year, Christofferson starred in Trouble in Mind and released the politically charged album Repossessed, which featured the song They Killed Him. This song paid tribute to several of his heroes, including Martin Luther King Jr., Jesus, and Mahatma Gandhi. Christofferson also appeared in the miniseries America, which explored life in America under Soviet control. Despite the success of the Highwaymen's second album, Highwaymen 2, in 1990, Christofferson's solo recording career experienced a downturn in the early 1990s, although he continued to perform successfully with the supergroup. His role in Lone Star, directed by John Sayles in 1996, revitalized his acting career, leading to appearances in films such as Blade, Blade Seku, Blade, Trinity, A Soldier's Daughter, Never Cries, Fire Down Below, Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes, Chelsea Walls, Payback, The Jacket, and Fast Food Nation. Throughout his career, Christofferson received numerous accolades for his songwriting. He was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1985 and had previously been honored by the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1977. In 1999, he released The Austin Sessions, an album featuring reworked versions of some of his favorite songs with contributions from artists like Mark Knopfler, Steve Earle, and Jackson Brown. Shortly after this release, Christofferson underwent coronary artery bypass surgery. In 2003, Christofferson released Broken Freedom Song, a live album recorded in San Francisco. That same year, he received the Spirit of Americana Free Speech Award from the Americana Music Association. His contributions to country music were further recognized in 2004, when he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. On October 21, 2005, Christofferson starred in Dreamer, playing the role of Pop, a retired thoroughbred horse trainer. The film was inspired by the true story of the mare Mariah Storm, who won the Turfway Breeders' Cup Classic. In 2006, Christofferson was honored with the Johnny Mercer Award from the Songwriters Hall of Fame and released his first album of new material in 11 years, titled This Old Road. On April 21, 2007, he received CMT's Johnny Cash Visionary Award, presented to him by Roseanne Cash, Johnny Cash's daughter. Christofferson expressed his admiration for Cash, saying, John was my hero before he was my friend, and anything with his name on it is really an honor in my eyes. Later that year, in July, Christofferson appeared on CMT's Studio 330 Sessions, where he performed many of his classic hits. On June 13, 2008, Chris Christofferson took part in a special taping of a PBS songwriter series in Nashville, performing an acoustic in the round set alongside Patty Griffin and Randy Owen from Alabama. Each artist showcased five songs during this intimate performance. Christofferson's set included beloved tracks such as The Best of All Possible Worlds, Darby's Castle, Casey's Last Ride, Me and Bobby McGee, and Here Comes That Rainbow Again. 
The episode aired later in December, celebrating the artistry of songwriters. Christofferson released a new album of original songs titled Closer to the Bone on September 28, 2009. Produced by Don was under the New West Records label. Prior to the album's launch, Christofferson expressed his appreciation for its intimate feel, noting that it reflected a general mood of introspection about life. On November 10, 2009, he was honored as a BMI icon at the 57th annual BMI Country Awards. Throughout his prolific career, Christofferson amassed an impressive collection of 48 BMI Country and Pop Awards. He commented on the joy of being a songwriter, sharing how rewarding it was to hear his songs interpreted by talented vocalists. Christofferson has always been modest about his singing voice, claiming that as he aged, any quality it had began to fade. In December 2009, it was announced that Christofferson would portray Joe in the upcoming album Ghost Brothers of Darkland County, a collaborative project between rock singer John Mellencamp and novelist Stephen King. On May 11, 2010, Light in the Attic Records released Please Don't Tell Me How the Story Ends, the publishing demos, which featured demos recorded during Christofferson's time as a janitor at Columbia. This album marked the first release of these recordings, showcasing material that later appeared on his albums and those of other prominent artists, including the original version of Me and Bobby McGee. On June 4, 2011, Christofferson performed a solo acoustic show at the Maui Arts and Cultural Center, where he played both his classic hits made famous by other artists and newer songs. In early 2013, he released another album of original songs called Feeling Mortal, a live album, An Evening with Chris Christofferson, followed in September 2014. Additionally, Christofferson lent his voice to the character Chief Hanlon of the NCR Rangers in the popular 2010 video game Fallout New Vegas. During an interview for Las Vegas Magazine on October 23, 2015, he revealed that he was working on a new album titled The Cedar Creek Sessions, recorded in Austin, which would include a mix of old and new songs, in December 2016, this album received a Grammy nomination for Best Americana Album. In 2017, Christofferson covered Brandy Carlisle's Turpentine on the album Cover Stories. On November 7, 2018, he performed alongside Carlisle, singing Joni Mitchell's A Case of You during a celebration of Mitchell's 75th birthday, titled Both Sides Now, Joni 75. In June 2019, Christofferson was announced as one of the supporting artists for Barbara Streisand's exclusive concert in London's Hyde Park on July 7th, part of the Barclays Summertime Concert Series. In January 2021, Christofferson announced his retirement from performing. His final concert took place in Fort Pierce, Florida, at the Sunrise Theatre on February 5th, 2020, where he was accompanied by The Strangers, marking the end of an extraordinary career in music and film. Personal life. In his personal life, Chris Christofferson has been a strong voice against several military conflicts and foreign policy decisions made by the United States. He openly opposed the Gulf War and the Iraq War, and he criticized various military interventions, including the U.S. invasion of Panama and support for the Contras during the Nicaraguan Revolution, as well as backing the apartheid government in South Africa. Interestingly, Christofferson's first LP featured a pro-Vietnam War song. However, after engaging in conversations with returning soldiers who had experienced the harsh realities of combat, he changed his stance. He recounted a disturbing story from a soldier who had witnessed horrific acts during interrogations, such as other soldiers throwing people out of helicopters. This experience deeply affected Christofferson, leading him to conclude that the U.S. was wrong in its actions during the Vietnam War. He described himself as a dove with claws, expressing pride in his military service while maintaining his anti-imperialist views. In a 1991 interview with a New Zealand television network, Christofferson sharply criticized the media's portrayal of the Gulf War, stating that it produced propaganda that could make a Nazi blush. His activism extended to supporting the United Farm Workers, and he participated in various rallies and benefit concerts, including those alongside civil rights leader Cesar Chavez to promote Proposition 14. His commitment to social justice remained strong throughout the years, 
as he continued to perform at benefit concerts for the UFW into the 2010 S. Christofferson's dedication to various causes was evident in several notable instances. In 1987, he participated in a benefit concert for Leonard Peltier, alongside prominent musicians like Jackson Brown, Willie Nelson, and Joni Mitchell. He also expressed solidarity with Mumia Abu-Jamal during a 1995 concert in Philadelphia, dedicating a song to him despite facing boos from the crowd. Additionally, Christofferson performed at events to raise funds for Palestinian children and showed support for Sinead O'Connor after her controversial protest on Saturday Night Live. Christofferson's romantic history has been quite eventful. He married his first girlfriend, Frances Fran Mavia Beer, in 1961, but the marriage ended in divorce in 1969. He had a brief relationship with Janis Joplin before her tragic death in 1970. His second marriage was to singer Rita Coolidge in 1973, which lasted until their divorce in 1980. Christofferson then married Lisa Myers in 1983. Together, Christofferson and Myers owned a home in Las Flores Canyon, Malibu, California, and also maintained a residence in Hana, Hawaii, on the island of Maui. Throughout his three marriages, Christofferson fathered eight children, two with his first wife, one with his second, and five with Lisa Myers. Chris Christofferson has expressed a desire for the first three lines of Leonard Cohen's song, Bird on the Wire, to be inscribed on his tombstone. The lines read, like a bird on the wire, like a drunk in a midnight choir, I have tried in my way to be free. These words reflect his lifelong quest for freedom and authenticity in both his art and personal life. After the passing of Chris Christofferson, many have reflected on the deep emotional impact that the loss of his dear friend and collaborator, Johnny Cash, had on him. Christofferson's feelings of sorrow and nostalgia were poignantly highlighted as he often spoke about being en portoise, weighed down by Cash's absence, emphasizing the strong bond they shared through their love of music. Christofferson's journey to fame was far from ordinary. Before he became known for hits like Help Me Make It Through the Night and Me and Bobby McGee, he worked as a janitor at a recording studio. It was during this time that Cash recognized Christofferson's talent and took a chance on him recording the now iconic song Sunday Morning Coming Down in 1970. This collaboration marked the beginning of a long friendship and professional relationship. Together with Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings, Christofferson and Cash formed the legendary country supergroup The Highwaymen in the mid-1980s, solidifying their status in country music history. Their bond endured through the years but Christofferson's heart was forever altered by Cash's death at the age of 71 in 2003. Reflecting on their time together, Christofferson recounted a significant moment from 1969 at the Newport Folk Festival, which coincided with the historic first moon landing. Cash had invited him on stage that night, an experience Christofferson described as unforgettable. He also shared that Cash kept a lyric of his, The Golden Idol, in his wallet, a gesture that meant a great deal to Christofferson, even though Cash never recorded the song. Following Cash's passing, Christofferson felt the weight of loss heavily. He recalled performing a solo gig in Nashville shortly after the funeral, noting that his songs took on new significance and depth in light of his friend's absence. Beyond his friendship with Cash, Christofferson had many colorful experiences with other icons. While studying at Oxford University in 1958, he met Ernest Hemingway at a bullfight in Spain, not long before the author's death. Christofferson remembered Hemingway as being inebriated and troubled, which foreshadowed the author's tragic end. Christofferson was also aware of the darker sides of fame and the destructive paths many celebrities walked. His acting career gained momentum after he worked with Dennis Hopper on the last movie. Christofferson described Hopper as the most self-destructive guy I had ever seen, recounting wild stories from that period, including Hopper's bizarre antics that antagonized the military and politicians. In a candid reflection, Christofferson discussed his own battles with alcoholism and drug abuse. He admitted to keeping a half gallon of Jose Cuervo tequila in his trailer and acknowledged that his liver had become the size of a football before he decided to quit drinking. Christofferson passed away in Maui, Hawaii on September 28, 2024, 
although the specific cause of death has not been revealed. In a heartfelt statement, his family expressed their gratitude for the time they spent with him and thanked his fans for their enduring love and support. They shared a touching sentiment, saying, When you see a rainbow, know he's smiling down at us all. Legacy Chris Christopherson leaves behind a legacy that transcends music, resonating deeply within the hearts of fans, fellow artists, and the cultural landscape of American music. Renowned not only for his exceptional songwriting talent, but also for his charismatic stage presence and rugged individuality, Christofferson's contributions to country music and beyond are profound and enduring. His journey began as a janitor at a recording studio, a humble start that would lead to a monumental career. Christofferson's songs, such as Me and Bobby McGee, Help Me Make It Through the Night and Sunday Morning Coming Down, have become timeless classics, covered by countless artists across various genres. His lyrics often blended personal experience with universal themes of love, loss, and the human condition, establishing him as a voice for the voiceless and a storyteller of extraordinary depth. As a member of the Highwaymen, alongside legends Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, and Waylon Jennings, Christofferson helped redefine the boundaries of country music. This supergroup not only celebrated the roots of the genre, but also paved the way for future generations of artists. Their collaboration exemplified the spirit of camaraderie and artistic expression, leaving an indelible mark on music history. Beyond his musical achievements, Christofferson was a passionate advocate for social justice. He used his platform to speak out against war and military interventions, expressing his opposition to the Vietnam War and later conflicts, such as the Gulf War. His activism extended to supporting various causes, including the United Farm Workers and Palestinian Children, showcasing his commitment to using music as a tool for change. His words resonated with a generation that craved authenticity and a deeper connection to the world around them. Christofferson's legacy is not merely confined to his songs and activism. It encompasses the relationships he built along the way. His camaraderie with fellow artists, the mentorship he offered to emerging talents, and his willingness to share his experiences have inspired countless musicians. His humility and genuine nature endeared him to many, making him a beloved figure in the music community. As an actor, Christofferson also made significant contributions to film, with memorable roles that showcased his versatility and charisma. His performances in films like A Star Is Born and The Last Movie expanded his reach and highlighted his talents beyond the stage, solidifying his status as a multifaceted artist. In his later years, even as he faced health challenges, Christofferson remained an influential figure, continuing to write and perform. His ability to convey raw emotion and personal stories never faded, and his music continued to resonate with audiences of all ages. Chris Christofferson's legacy is one of creativity, compassion, and resilience. He will be remembered not just for his remarkable contributions to music, but also for his unwavering commitment to authenticity and social justice. As fans listen to his songs and reflect on his life, they celebrate a true legend whose impact will be felt for generations to come.